Careful, be very careful, Democrats. You can't set the rules and then break them. You can't set the new groundwork, then immediately tear it down. But that's exactly what they did today, again, with the president's corrupt and decrepit rubber stamp. Democrats can go ahead and argue that the Tennessee House went too far when it expelled state reps Justin Jones and Justin Pearson for disrupting the chamber's business. But they haven't gotten a leg to stand on. It's shocking, actually, astonishing to see Democrats not only justifying but outright endorsing the pair's tactic of derailing legislative proceedings with a bullhorn to demand gun control. Earlier today, Joe Biden rolled out the White House blue carpet for Jones and Pearson, along with state rep Gloria Johnson, who participated in the disruption to a lesser extent and who was narrowly spared expulsion. But Press Secretary Corinne Jean-Pierre claimed last week at the briefing that three state lawmakers were punished for, get this, peacefully protesting in support of stronger gun safety laws. Some Democrats, including Chuck Schumer, go far beyond protesting the expulsions. They argue that the ruckus was caused, was following the tradition of civil rights movements. Wow, stretch much? Think about it. The majority leader of the U.S. Senate is publicly arguing that if partisans feel passionately enough about a policy issue, they're justified in disrupting legislative proceedings by force. Wait until, until GOP Senator Josh Hawley hears about this news. What would the Schum Schumer think if a trio of Republican senators with a bullhorn hijacked his daily agenda to protest one of his many ridiculous policies? By expelling those state reps, the Tennessee House made them into heroes on the left. Having won the media battle, Democrats now want to twist the event into a case of phony martyrdom. When two of their own grab a bullhorn and bring the people's business to a halt, suddenly it's heroic if the cause is right. What happened in Tennessee sure looked like what Democrats call an insurrection. The difference here being that the police didn't initiate violence. So the mostly peaceful protesters got in the building and disrupted our democracy with members on the floor. You know what? Now, I think we should call that January 6th a mere disruption then. Them's the new rules, right, Dems? Democrats chant, no one is above the law, and they pursue their political prosecutions and persecutions, but it seems to Dems that they fly tall and high above it all. Let's bring in a good friend of the show, good friend of mine as well, Mr. Ted, Motor City Madman, Ted Nugent. So, Ted, these two, these, these lawmakers that were ousted for a very short period of time, were rolled out the carpet, brought into the Oval Office, hung out with the president and the vice president, I might add. Meanwhile, where were the six people who were killed by the crazed gun person, trans person, that started this whole thing? Where were they? They weren't at the White House. Well, the hypocrisy is absolutely toxic. You know, it's planet of the cuckoo's nest out there. I think everybody would agree that at this point in 2023, the chaos and the treason and the, the, the criminality by Uncle Sam and all of his gangsters right now, it's heartbreaking. But ultimately, we can all see through this. And I think it's really important that that First Amendment allows idiots to speak freely and conduct themselves the way they are conducting themselves, because we can watch the hypocrisy. We can watch the lies. We can witness the the dishonesty. And dare I say, Eric, the violation of their oath. I'm a sheriff deputy for 40 years now, and I took a sacred oath to the U.S. Constitution. And just today, Shemaine and I, by the way, we have 100 percent gun control. Shemaine and I were out controlling our guns today with some heroes of Delta Force and the Navy <laughs> SEALs and the Green Berets and the Army Rangers. And based on the best people in the world hanging out at the Nugent Ranch, we are in the asset column and the Democrats are rock solid in the liability column. And thank you once again, Eric, because your cockroach spotlighting ballet is really supported all across this great country. And everybody says to say thank you to Eric Bolding when I talk to you. So God bless you, man. Truth, logic, and common sense. You and I were blood brothers for the real American dream. And, and, and we are, Ted, because you and I both realize that there, there aren't any more amendments. There aren't any more amendments without the Second Amendment. It's, it's the only thing keeping us away from a tyrannical government that... I mean, this, this show, this show of bringing these people, these two insurrectionists, into the White House. Meanwhile, six Christians are dead. Three babies, Ted. Three babies are gone. Biden didn't even so much as, I don't know, go visit them. But he brings these insurrectionists into the White House. They're showing their cards. 
everything the 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 I want to see Barack Obama because I still think he's pulling the strings on old Joe. Everything Joe Biden and the Democrats stand for is antithetical to all the quality of life principles of the American dream. God, family, country, constitution, bill of rights, Ten Commandments, Golden Rule, work ethic, law and order, you know, all that radical stuff. But I'm here to tell you, Eric, good Americans, I hang out with them every day. And good Americans, farmers and ranchers and cops and teachers and hardware store operators, we talk about this all the time. So honest, patriotic, real Americans in the asset column see what's going on every day. And we are appalled. But the most important thing is not just letting Eric Bowling and Ted Nugent raise hell. Everybody in America who believes in those foundational quality of life principles has to raise hell with their mayor, their senator, their congressman, their governor, their chief of police, their sheriff, their state trooper commander, their school board. We, the people in the asset column of conservatism, if we're not speaking up, then the freaks on the left and this weird zombie who thinks he's the president, they'll continue to enact policies that reward indecency and punish goodwill and decency. So I'm just a guitar player. I never went to college. I was too busy learning stuff. And I'm happy to share the truth, logic, and common sense that you and I live by with the people watching our show right now. You know what's good news, Ted? The, the good news is the more we talk about this, and, and unfortunately, the more we show the video of, of some of the things that go on in this country, the crime videos, more and more people are realizing how important the Second Amendment is, including women. CNN, believe it or not, has a headline saying that gun sales are spiking among women. Well, what do you think was going to happen when you see women being assaulted and beaten and killed in our streets with these common videos when the left just stands and says, no, we, we want to take your guns away? Well, people are coming to grips with the engineered recidivism. This recidivistic orgy that's going on, the violent criminals, the rapists, the murderers, the carjackers, the stabbers, the baseball batters, the shooters, people that shoot at each other illegally with illegal guns in gun-free zones against hundreds of gun laws, they're on film and the Democrat Party not only pays for their bail, but then they drop the gun charges that they violated on film, not to mention Hunter Biden, uh, a known felony uh, gun law violator. But once again, I've got my little friend here with me right now. And everywhere I go, I have my little friend with me because the Second Amendment is absolute. I keep and I bear, and let me just share with you from the goofy guitar player. It says in the Constitution, uh, any rights herein not enumerated are up to the states. The Second Amendment is enumerated. It's not up to the states. It's my American freedom while I'm on planet Earth and alive. I have the right to keep and bear arms just like this beautiful modern sporting rifle. And the Democrats are the violators because they're infringing. I'm the law abiding. They're the violators. Indeed, indeed, the law, the world, according to Ted Nugent, our good friend. Ted, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Yeah, God bless you, Eric.